Section five of the Song of Hiawatha. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recorded by Peter Yearsley. The Song of Hiawatha by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Section five. Hiawatha's Fasting. You shall hear how Hiawatha prayed and fasted in the forest. Not for greater skill in hunting, not for greater craft in fishing not for triumphs in the battle and renown among the warriors, but for profit of the people, for advantage of the nations. First he built a lodge for fasting, built a wigwam in the forest by the shining big sea water. In the blithe and pleasant springtime, in the moon of leaves he built it, and with dreams and visions many, seven whole days and nights he fasted. On the first day of his fasting, through the leafy woods he wandered, saw the deer start from the thicket, saw the rabbit in his burrow, heard the pheasant, Bena, drumming, heard the squirrel, Ajidamo, rattling in his hoard of acorns, saw the pigeon, the Omami, building nests among the pine trees, and in flocks the wild goose, Wawa, flying to the fenlands northwards, whirring, wailing far above him, Master of life, he cried, desponding, must our lives depend on these things? On the next day of his fasting, by the river's brink he wandered, through the muscaday, the meadow, saw the wild rice, manamoni, saw the blueberry, minaga, and the strawberry, odamin, and the gooseberry, shabomin, and the grapevine, the bimagut, trailing o'er the alder branches, filling all the air with fragrance. "'Master of life!' he cried, desponding. "'Must our lives depend on these things?' On the third day of his fasting, by the lake he sat and pondered, by the still transparent water, saw the sturgeon, Nama, leaping, scattering drops like beads of wampum, saw the yellow perch, the Sawa, like a sunbeam in the water, saw the pike, the maskinosia, and the herring, Okahawis, and the shogasi, the crawfish. Master of life, he cried, desponding, must our lives depend on these things? On the fourth day of his fasting in his lodge he lay exhausted, from his couch of leaves and branches, gazing with half-open eyelids full of shadowy dreams and visions, on the dizzy swimming landscape on the gleaming of the water, on the splendour of the sunset. And he saw a youth approaching, dressed in garments green and yellow, coming through the purple twilight, through the splendour of the sunset. Plumes of green bent o'er his forehead, and his hair was soft and golden. Standing at the open doorway, long he looked at Hiawatha, looked with pity and compassion on his wasted form and features and in accents like the sighing of the south wind in the tree-tops said he o oh my hiawatha all your prayers are heard in heaven for you pray not like the others not for greater skill in hunting not for greater craft in fishing not for triumph in the battle nor renown among the warriors but for profit of the people for advantage of the nations from the master of life descending I, the friend of man, Mondamin, come to warn you and instruct you how by struggle and by labour you shall gain what you have prayed for. Rise up from your bed of branches, rise, O youth, and wrestle with me. Faint with famine, Hiawatha started from his bed of branches, from the twilight of his wigwam, forth into the flush of sunset, came and wrestled with Mondamin. At his touch, he felt new courage throbbing in his brain and bosom, felt new life and hope and vigour run through every nerve and fibre. So they wrestled there together in the glory of the sunset, and the more they strove and struggled, stronger still grew Hiawatha, till the darkness fell around them, and the heron, the Shushuga, from her nest among the pine-trees, gave a cry of lamentation, gave a scream of pain and famine. "'Tis enough!' Then said Mondamin, smiling upon Hiawatha, But to-morrow, when the sun sets, I will come again to try you. And he vanished, 
and was seen not whether sinking as the rain sinks whether rising as the mists rise hiawatha saw not knew not only saw that he had vanished leaving him alone and fainting with the misty lake below him and the reeling stars above him on the morrow and the next day when the sun through heaven descending like a red and burning cinder from the hearth of the great spirit fell into the western waters came mondamin for the trial for the strife with hiawatha came as silent as the dew comes from the empty air appearing into empty air returning taking shape when earth it touches but invisible to all men in its coming and its going thrice they wrestled there together in the glory of the sunset till the darkness fell around them till the heron the shushuga from her nest among the pine trees uttered her loud cry of famine and mondamin paused to listen tall and beautiful he stood there in his garments green and yellow to and fro his plumes above him waved and nodded with his breathing and the sweat of the encounter stood like drops of dew upon him and he cried o oh, hiawatha bravely have you wrestled with me thrice have wrestled stoutly with me and the master of life who sees us he will give to you the triumph then he smiled and said to-morrow is the last day of your conflict is the last day of your fasting you will conquer and o'ercome me make a bed for me to lie in where the rain may fall upon me where the sun may come and warm me strip these garments green and yellow strip this nodding plumage from me lay me in the earth and make it soft and loose and light above me let no hand disturb my slumber let no weed nor worm molest me let not kargagi the raven come to haunt me and molest me only come yourself to watch me till i wake and start and quicken till i leap into the sunshine and thus saying he departed peacefully slept hiawatha but he heard the wawanaisa heard the whippoorwill complaining perched upon his lonely wigwam heard the rushing sebowisha heard the rivulet rippling near him talking to the darksome forest heard the sighing of the branches as they lifted and subsided at the passing of the night wind heard them as one hears in slumber far-off murmurs dreamy whispers peacefully slept hiawatha on the morrow came nokomis on the seventh day of his fasting came with food for hiawatha came imploring and bewailing lest his hunger should o'ercome him lest his fasting should be fatal but he tasted not and touched not only said to her nokomis wait until the sun is setting till the darkness falls around us till the heron the shushuga crying from the desolate marshes tells us that the day is ended homeward weeping went nokomis sorrowing for her hiawatha fearing lest his strength should fail him lest his fasting should be fatal he meanwhile sat weary waiting for the coming of mondamin till the shadows pointing eastward lengthened over field and forest till the sun dropped from the heaven floating on the waters westward as a red leaf in the autumn falls and floats upon the water falls and sinks into its bosom and behold the young mondamin with his soft and shining tresses with his garments green and yellow with his long and glossy plumage stood and beckoned at the doorway and as one in slumber walking pale and haggard but undaunted from the wigwam hiawatha came and wrestled with mondamin round about him spun the landscape sky and forest reeled together and his strong heart leaped within him as the sturgeon leaps and struggles in a net to break its meshes like a ring of fire around him blazed and flared the red horizon and a hundred suns seemed looking at the combat of the wrestlers suddenly upon the greensward all alone stood hiawatha panting with his wild exertion palpitating 
with the struggle and before him breathless lifeless lay the youth with hair dishevelled plumage torn and garments tattered dead he lay there in the sunset and victorious hiawatha made the grave as he commanded stripped the garments from mondamin stripped his tattered plumage from him laid him in the earth and made it soft and loose and light above him and the heron the shushuga from the melancholy moorlands gave a cry of lamentation gave a cry of pain and anguish homeward then went hiawatha to the lodge of old nokomis and the seven days of his fasting were accomplished and completed but the place was not forgotten where he wrestled with mondamin nor forgotten nor neglected was the grave where lay mondamin sleeping in the rain and sunshine where his scattered plumes and garments faded in the rain and sunshine day by day did hiawatha go to wait and watch beside it kept the dark mould soft above it kept it clean from weeds and insects drove away with scoffs and shoutings kargagi the king of ravens till at length a small green feather from the earth shot slowly upward then another and another and before the summer ended stood the maize in all its beauty with its shining robes about it and its long soft yellow tresses and in rapture hiawatha cried aloud it is mondamin yes the friend of man mondamin then he called to old nokomis and iagu the great boaster showed them where the maize was growing told them of his wondrous vision of his wrestling and his triumph of this new gift to the nations which should be their food for ever and still later when the autumn changed the long green leaves to yellow and the soft and juicy kernels grew like wampum hard and yellow then the ripened ears he gathered stripped the withered husks from off them as he once had stripped the wrestler gave the first feast of mondamin and made known unto the people this new gift of the great spirit End of section 5